Your Excellency Sahil al mazruri Minister of Energy and Industry, welcome to Bloomberg. Big changes in the Saudi Minister for OPEC. Abdulaziz in, Khaled al-Fali out. Are you shocked? No, I actually, I'm not, I'm not shocked. The changing of, of ministers, it happened, and it does not mean the changing in strategy. I think uh, we are, I'm very happy for, uh, for Prince, uh, His Royal Highness Prince uh, Abdulaziz, and I think we are lucky to have someone with that knowledge of the industry. Prince Abdulaziz probably uh, been in OPEC more than any one of us. Uh, he he been there for every decision, and uh, people maybe doesn't know, but many of those decisions, especially the the cooperation agreements between OPEC and non-OPEC, uh, Prince uh, was working. Uh, he was working with us, and uh, day and night to uh, to conclude it. So I don't think we are getting someone who is not who is not uh, uh, aware or or, or uh, who is going to be a shock to the industry. I think it's assuring. Uh, the kingdom uh, strategy uh, always will be pulling us together toward consensus on what is good for the environment. Uh, I worked with Khalid. He has done a great job. Uh, tremendous efforts uh, and pressure been on him uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the last years. Khalid al-Fali was a man who often said to us in the press scrum, he'd do whatever it takes. Do you think of what you know of His Royal Highness of the, of the Prince, he's going to be more of the same, to do whatever it takes. So the side is going to push more of whatever it takes. I think when it comes to what we decide as ministers, this, is, this comes from the leadership of the country, the support that we get from our leadership. So it's not just the minister decision to do whatever it takes. It's the country decision, the country leader's decision to do whatever it takes to balance the market. So I don't think there will be changes uh, I'm not expecting to have uh, changes. I think with the personality that I know mm -hmm. of uh, Prince Abdul Aziz, he's very decisive. He is uh, uh, he have a strong personality when it comes to the market, and he understand uh, the uh, the benefits to uh, to all of the producers uh, of of that that leadership role of Saudi Arabia that it took to balance the market. And uh, I'm not expecting uh, changes. I think I think it's going to be a continuation of the good work that uh, Khalid have started. Do you think that the word that we should look for is continuity of policy? I think every every uh, every minister would have uh, his own uh, his own views uh, that he would uh, discuss it with uh, with the leadership of, of of his country. But I think. Everyone is convinced that this efforts that we put together, together with the non-OPEC, have been working, have been beneficial for everyone. And I don't think there is any regret that we should change or change strategies now. We need to continue working. For us in the United Arab Emirates, we are always supportive to that effort. We believe in it and we believe it, it will continue. And that OPEC, non-OPEC relationship, how pivotal is it that the Prince continues this relationship with Novak as was? I think it will continue. The relationship is, is again, institutional. It's yeah. not personalities. Uh, ministers uh, come and go, uh, but the, uh, what, what stays is the strategy of the countries, and it's, uh, I, think, I think, what... Uh, what happened was a willing from the leadership of Saudi Arabia. It was not only uh, cooperation with, uh, with Russia in the oil and gas sector. I think it extended to, uh, to other fields as well, investments as well. Everybody in OPEC and non-OPEC is working towards stabilizing the market and helping prices higher. Do you think the Saudis are getting a little bit more desperate for higher prices? I don't think it's about the price more than sustaining or, or keeping the gains that we had in balancing the market. You remember back in 2016 where the market was, we worked very hard, 17 and 18 since the deal, uh, to bring the market to uh, closer to stabilization. Uh, I think now we are having forces outside the supply and demand, which was the leading force back in 2018 in balancing and in, in, in dictating what is the, uh, the commodity uh, prices. 
uh, we're not targeting a price more than that keeping that stability we don't want to be oversupplying neither having the risk of undersupplying the market and going to a very high prices you've made that point to me on every occasion that we've sat down and spoken but today you've used the phrase whatever is necessary to balance that market what do you mean by that and are you lobbying for deeper cuts first of all uh, any decisions on cuts need to be studied uh, by the whole group. The role of the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee is to monitor the market and monitor the, com the conformity and compliance to the deal. And we are meeting. So if the technical team come and tell us mm. that we need to do more in terms of uh, conformities or in terms of cuts, and then we will decide, we will challenge that this, uh, and, and, and debate it. And after that debate, we will raise a recommendation. This is how, how the mechanics of, the, of, the, of it. We will raise the recommendations to the, to the ministerial. If the ministerial, and again, this is a unanimous, uh, if the ministerial sees that that recommendation makes sense, then they'll take it. Is there a recommendation in place now that I am aware of? No. So, so I can tell you that. There is, there is no recommendation that I am aware of. But again, market, market dynamics is, uh, is, is, uh, is something that is changing. We have a very capable technical team. They are meeting and they are going to uh, raise it to us. So if you wait for us till, when, till Wednesday, then we will be able to share with you what is that deliberation. You can come and tell me first uh, as to what the decision, you talked about compliance and the numbers are critically important. Nigeria and Iraq have not been complying with the agreements that we've monitored over the past number of months. Will there be more pressure to comply? Of course, the, the, uh, the, uh, the role of the committee is to issue letters, talk to them, call ministers, call even heads of state. And we remember that uh, we have been sending uh, the... Uh, delegations and sometimes the ministers, uh, some of the, uh, I mean, one of the chairs would fly in, mm -hmm. meet ahead of, of, uh, of, of a country if their conformity is lagging behind. But at the end of the day, if, if we need everyone to be committed to the deal, and that's the commitment that they come and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, commit themselves and their countries to do it. Uh, Iraq is, is, is invited to be, to be a member, as you know, member of the GMMC. So now uh, we will hear it from, the, from the, uh, the minister. We need to have the conformity level by individual countries. But what's important as well is to look at the overall conformity. And I think we are over, uh, over conforming in terms of group. But, we, but it's not fair that some countries are taking higher share than the others. Uh, we, will, uh, we will ensure that everyone is committed and the messages that we get from the minister that they are committed to reach that conformity. Do you see a set of circumstances where the cuts might need to be implemented for the whole of 2020? Again, we're monitoring the market and we will make that decision when we meet. In, so there are two periods of, of checks. There is the, the, um, the, the GMMC that we have now, and there is that GMMC we will have ahead of the, of the uh, ministerial meeting. I think, I think the market, as you know, is moving on, uh, on uh, days and, and weeks, and we are looking at, at all of the contributions. And whatever that decision we need to take, I think we have demonstrated to the world, to the market, that we are up to that challenge if a challenge to take a decision is needed. Uh, so I am keeping uh, open um, uh, idea on any suggestion. For us in the United Arab Emirates, I can assure you that we will support any decision that the group is coming up with to support, to support the market. We be, we did You're not prepared to shoulder more cuts for the UAE if it's the right thing for the market. If that is the right thing, and if everyone is in, in OPEC and non OPEC are committing, UAE will not uh, will not shy away from its commitment. We have demonstrated that uh, into the all of the deals, and we believe that this unity is doing uh, great to balance the market. There is no. Uh, one-sided uh, view of just raise the prices. We care about the consumers as we are caring about ourselves. 
shine a light on global demand for me. U.S. manufacturing, the first contraction since 2016. China data this morning, the exports are dropping. What can you tell me? Are you worried about the risk of a global recession? You've seen many cycles. What is the data telling you? I think we need to, uh, if there is an advice from us as, 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 as producers, I think the advice is United States and China need to, set, to settle that dispute as soon as possible because that is not only pushing the uncertainty in the oil markets, it's pushing, pushing, the, pushing the uncertainty of recession to all markets. So I think the higher the tension, the more risk of recession or potential recession in the future. Do you think those tensions could get higher from what you've seen and assessed? I think, I believe they will be eased because no one can afford to have higher tension than where, where they are today. I think the hope uh, that the, the tension will be eased and once the tension is eased, I can assure you the demand is healthy and we will get there. So from an oil point of view, the demand will be healthy if they settle this dispute. And it's a negotiation dispute. Everyone understands that it's not going to be a catastrophic. It's going to be negotiation and they'll settle at the end of the day. But, that, but the longer that process, I think the more it will have a side effect on all markets, including the commodity market. To close, are we underpricing then? If, if everybody comes together eventually, are we really underpricing? the potential shift in price that could come from resolution? I think the market will dictate the, the right price and we are after the right price for consumers and for, for. So it's difficult now to comment. If there is, for example, a hope for a higher growth, mm -hmm. then demand will be increasing. And that will means that we need to relax uh, the, uh, the cuts and ensure the supply to the, uh, to the market. If there is a contraction, then we will not oversupply the market, and that's what, what we always do. But what would be the price? We're not focusing on the price, we're more focusing on that keeping that balance. And that is truly what is this deal about. Iran and Venezuela, I, I caught up with the VTOL CEO a couple of weeks ago and he said, man, is, the outages from Iran and Venezuela are very much in the market. What's the other potential shock that we could have in this market? Well, I think we need to be, uh, to be mindful of any uh, production increase. And if there is a production increase coming from a country that is not producing today for any reason, uh, Venezuela could be any country, then we need to be mindful of uh, not just oversupplying the market. So that the right decision will come once we know how much is coming. The, the bigger the shock into the market, and I don't think we are going to see shocks in the market that, that uh, hugely disturb uh, the, uh, the balance, then that is, I think, the, the highest risk. But the probability of that risk is lower since no one have that capacity of just opening up and, uh, and uh, flooding the market.